if diversification creates benefits for PNG, then why doesn't PNG increase its diversification further? This brings us to the cost of diversification. A firm can be expected to increase its level of diversification until the benefits and costs cancel out each other. There are several costs of diversification. Eventually, they are all due to the cognitive limitations of managers. As a firm gets more and more diversified, managing the company becomes more and more complex. Because of the increase in complexity, even very smart managers will be unable to understand all the managerial issues that are involved in running a large multi-business firm. Thus, they are likely to make mistakes that can eventually cancel out the benefits of diversification. This increase in complexity also makes it difficult to coordinate across multiple businesses. Coordination between businesses is necessary to convert potential economies of scope into realized economies of scope. But since coordination is difficult to achieve in a large multi-business firm, achieving economies of scope remains an elusive goal. It is for this reason that the word synergy has acquired a somewhat negative connotation. It is seen as a promise that is never delivered. As a strategist, your role would be to ask the hard questions and push yourself to show clearly how it can be created. You can do this by clearly articulating the activities, resources, and capabilities that can be shared across businesses. An additional cost of diversification is that it increases the size of the firm, which in turn can make it bureaucratic and rigid. A firm that is focused on a single business or a few businesses can react much more quickly to changes in the market or in technology. Finally, managers may inappropriately use the dominant logic from one business to another business. Prahalad and Betis define dominant logic as the way in which managers conceptualize the business and make critical resource allocation decisions, be it in technologies, product development, distribution, advertising, or in human resource management. It can be thought of as a cognitive mindset about what managers believe are the important business problems and how these problems should be addressed. The dominant logic for a business is built up over time through the experiences of managers. Now, when the firm enters a new business, managers are likely to apply the same dominant logic to the new business as well. However, the dominant logic that is appropriate for the new business may be different from the dominant logic of the existing businesses. These differences can lead to costly mistakes and thus diversification may hurt a firm's performance rather than improving it. As I said before, the costs of diversification are in one way or the other related to the cognitive limitations of managers. The costs of diversification that we discussed so far are likely to be even higher when the relatedness between businesses is low. When relatedness is low, there are fewer economies of scope that can be realized. The differences between the two businesses can also make it difficult to achieve coordination between them. Further, low relatedness also implies that the dominant logic that is appropriate for one business may be very different from the one that is appropriate for another business. Thus, as relatedness between businesses decreases, the expected benefits are low while the cost of diversification can increase. It is for this reason that firms that have diversified into unrelated businesses often face a conglomerate discount in stock markets. The market valuation of such companies can be lower than the market valuation of the independent businesses. So, based on the discussion of the benefits and costs of diversification, what is the expected relationship between performance and level of diversification? When the firm is in only a single business or when it has a low level of diversification, it does not have the potential to benefit from economies of scope. At high levels of diversification and especially when relatedness between businesses is low, 
the cost of diversification outweigh the benefits of diversification. At the moderate level of diversification, a firm has the potential to benefit from economy of scope without incurring high costs. Thus, firms with a moderate level of diversification can be expected to outperform firms that have a low level of diversification and also outperform firms that have a high level of diversification. That is, we can expect an inverted U relationship between performance and level of diversification. Let me add a note of caution here. Despite extensive research, we still do not know for sure what is the relationship between diversification and performance. There is only a weak consensus that firms with a moderate levels of diversification outperform focused firms.